All right, everybody, let's give this thing a try. We're going to do, do a joist layout for this house. Let's see if we can make this thing work. You don't need to see me anymore. I'm Paul. Good to see you again. Turn me off and we'll get to work. So this is our floor plan here. I just took all of the outside exterior walls, outside of all of these walls, copied them over, offset them eight inches, and then put a little, um, little, uh, two by six wall on the interior, a little half inch air gap. So it should look like this. There's my footing underneath. This is my foundation plan. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to draw a joist layout for this thing. So the first thing we want to do is identify which way will the joist run. So looking in here, this distance is 30 feet. This distance is 35. So the joist will always run in the short direction. So if I know my joists are going to run from left to right, I know my beam is going to if I know my joists are going to run from top to bottom because they run in the short direction, then I know my beam is going to run in the long direction. So the long direction is left to right. If I could just find a midpoint for this, I could start my beam right here and run it all the way over to this here. So that's the midpoint of this line right here. That's how I know it's in the center. I don't need it to be in the center of this line, but I also want to kind of use logic. And if I have a stair right here already, then I can just move the beam to that stair location. So I'm just going to grab this beam move it up. I'm going to offset it. Uh, it. It's actually usually one and three quarter inches. So I'll offset it, make it a two ply one and three quarter inch. So it doesn't, oh yeah, one and three quarter times two is one and a half. So if we do a two ply one and three quarter inch LVL, that should work out quite well. Now I, I as a rule of thumb, I don't want my beams to, to span much more than 14 feet. So if I go from that point to the inside of the foundation, I get 10 foot seven. So then I can put a post in this wall that actually works out kind of by fluke. Uh, as for a, what a radius, I think so 1.75 would give me a three and a half inch diameter post. That's what I want. Or oh, sorry, I want a three inch diameter post. So I'll just draw that again. It always asks for the radius. Radius can be 1.5. So this is going to be an adjustable three inch diameter post. Cool thing about a three inch diameter post is it fits into a three and a half inch wall. Not like that, it doesn't. Like this. And then I'm going to move that over an inch and a half. And it's right at the edge of that wall, so I'll just move it over a little bit further. Maybe another half inch. And then um, I can put a dimension on that later. And then I'll also I'll copy this post. Actually, I'll do something. I'll mirror it. If I mirror that post from here, if I mirror it in this wall right here. That should actually work. I don't want to draw on this layer anymore. I'm going to draw on maybe a cyan layer or something like that. Something's a bit more visible. I'll draw on a layer called furniture. Don't really care. So there's my beam here. So now I want to do a joist layout. I know this beam will only come into a beam pocket. So I'm going to offset four inches and trim that beam. Oops. Use the, kind of the old school trimmer. There we go. That'll get trimmed up there, and then I'll just match that property so it's nice and clean. There's my beam. There's the end of my beam. That's my beam pocket. Same thing over here. Offset four inches, and then I can just trim. There we go. And if you want to get really anal, I actually don't see. I'm going to do it the old way. I don't actually see uh, these lines below, so I'm just going to delete all of these. I actually just see the beam like that. I, to be honest, I wouldn't see those lines below. So it can start to do, you can start to clean it up like this. Same thing on this side. I'm going to hit trim. I like to do cutting edges. I prefer the old way. And I won't see that wall stuff below. There you go. So there's my beam set up in my basement. That's already a hidden line, so I can leave that one. I know my joists are running top to bottom. So the first thing I want to do is I want to put a pony wall over here. So I'll offset a half inch. And then I'll offset that three and a half inches because pony walls are sheeted. So this is a three and a half inch wall. I'll put another one here, offset half inch, and then offset three and a half inches. This is going to be a little pony wall, which is just a little mini wall, which runs in the same direction as the um, as the joists. I'll have other pony walls in other places too. I'm also going to put a header joist down here. I'm going to make it uh, one and an eighth, 1.125. And I'll turn my camera all back on just for a second. So um, I found a I found a rim joist, and you can see here it's actually called rim board, and you can see it's one and an eighth. 
So this can be a lot of different dimensions, but let's use the one and an eighth one because this is the one I found in my office. It looks like this, kind of structural. It's an engineered product. It's essentially a really, really thick piece of OSB. So we're going to use one and an eighth. So I'm going to offset uh, 1.125, which is one and an eighth. And my computer is thinking I'm going to offset 1.125, which is one and an eighth. And these are all going to be all my trimmers. Why is that not working? I should have just repeated. There we go, it's working better. Offset all of these one and an eighth from here. This will be all my headers. And of course, where there isn't a header, there will be a pony wall. So we can put some other pony walls in later. Maybe might might end up being one right, right here, or one right here, something like that. So we've got some pretty good stuff there. Okay, this first step we're going to do, I'm actually going to change, I'm actually going to match the property so that all these, all these things end up on a different layer so they don't all appear as white. There is my, oh, my first uh, header got deleted. Let's go back and do that. Everything here at cyan is going to be part of the joist layout. I don't know why that first one got deleted. Huh? Yeah, I just seen that happen with the offset there. Then this will help me later. It'll save me from trimming a ton. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset these joists at 19.2 inches on center, which is the most common offset that we have. So I'm going to offset. I'm going to take the outside of my exterior wall. This is very important outside of the exterior wall to the center of the first choice. So if I offset 19.2, take this line uh, outside and offset it. So this is now the center of the first choice. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it. I'm going to trim this one here too. I'm going to trim that. So this is the center of the choice. But I'm going to turn the camera back on here for a sec. And choice. So what the line I just drew essentially is the center of this web right here. But what I want to do is when I'm looking down on it, I actually want to show the top of this flange. So this flange is a two by three. That means it's one and a half tall, two and a half wide. So two by three, just like a two by four, instead of it being one and a half by three and a half, it's one and a half by two and a half. So the top of this flange is going to be two and a half inches wide. So let me just turn that camera back off and I'll show you how we do that. So I need the center of this first flange. So I'm going to offset 1.25 because it's two and a half inches wide. Go this way and this way. And I'm going to erase that center line. I'm going to change these properties so that these are all cyan so I can actually see my stuff. And then I'm going to, this is my first 19.2. Um, so if I draw a little line from here and then I put a dimension on that. So I just drew a little line along the bottom so I could find the center. That should be one foot seven and fifty one two fifty six. That's that's um, nineteen point two. Now what I do is I copy this and I go with nineteen point two and hit enter. And then what I can do is I can do that a couple times. Nineteen point two and enter. I know I could use the array command. I just don't like it. And now what I can do is I've got a couple of these. I can start to copy them like this. So I can't copy them from this corner because that would be a little bit that that wouldn't really work. But what I can do now is I can copy from like that base point right there. And then they go all the way to here. And they just keep going to that next one. Don't double up. Just keep going to that next one. We'll have to do some trimming later, as you can see. So the array command, the way it used to work is really easy. I'm sure it's still easy, but I just don't have any time for it. it I don't like it, the way the changes they've made to it. So this is going to be all of my joists here. I don't like a lot of the changes they've made. Uh, I can now trim these. I'm actually going to choose cutting edges again. And I can just trim all of these. I got them all. Oops, I trim at the wrong spot. Trim, cutting edges. I can trim right there. And I can trim those all at that spot. And then I can extend these ones. So I can extend, I can, if I choose boundary edges, it'll go from It'll go all the way to there. And then I can extend all of these. Didn't work. 
Maybe I can extend them all now. There we go. It's all extending. So I can extend. This is the new way, which is quicker, but not quicker when you're trying to do something specific. There we go. I've extended all of these. These are all extending to the trimmer. I'm going to choose the boundary edge again. There we go. So I've, tr I've extended all of these joists. These ones here work. These ones here all need to be extended too. So I'm going to choose boundary edge, extend to that, hit enter. I think this will work. Yeah, it's working. Because so I hit enter. And now I'm just going to. I was going to window all those, but I guess I'll just do this. And then also select that one and that one. So these are all now extending to the end of the trimmer. So you can see if I didn't put this trimmer on first and I extend it to the edge of the foundation wall, then I put the trimmer joist on after, I'd have to trim everything off, and I don't want to do that. That'd be a pain in the neck. If there were no stairs and no toilets and no uh, cantilevers, this would be a piece of cake. So what I did... Um, now what we do here is we would add a little pony wall would go here because there's no joist there. And then I'd add a three and a half inch wall. So this is a pony wall here. And I'm going to make the rim joist. I'm going to make the rim joist the boss. So I'm going to have that rim joist actually extend like this. And then here I'm going to make the rim joist the boss again. So I'm going to trim that pony wall so the rim joist is actually overlapping. And then the pony wall kind of comes into that. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to fill it this. Just draw a little line from here to here. And then I'm going to trim this up. Oops. I want to do the other thing. I want to extend that. I want the rim to be the boss. I'll just trim those. So the rim joist or the header joist is now the boss, not the, not the pony wall. Same thing here too. Trim the pony wall. Pony wall will come to the edge of that header. So the pony wall is kind of acting like a joist a little bit. All right, uh, let's do this stair. So wherever there is a stair, there is a floor. Oh, I might have this. This might be a little bit. Oh, I have to actually bring this thing over. Okay, so what I'm going to do is when I drew my basement, I actually drew the full stair. I didn't draw, I didn't bring this wall over. So I need to bring this wall over. The way that I can get it from one plan to the other is to choose a base point that I know is common. So I'll choose that base point. And I'll bring it all the way over to there. So I know that I have a wall here. If I have a wall here, it means that there's a floor under it. So that's a good thing. So I know that, that I'll be needing a joist there. And I'll also be needing a joist right here. Uh, so these joists, um, since this thing is uh, more than 800 wide, I'm going to be doubling my trimmers. So I'm going to get rid of these walls. These are just walls in the basement. I'm going to get rid of these. And I'm going to offset uh, 2.5. And I'm going to do it twice because since this distance is more than 800, I have to double my trimmers. I have to double these. And I have to do the same thing here. So there's a beam down below. I actually don't need, since there's a beam below, I don't know if I need to put a joist in that spot. I just talked to you, my class about that this morning. I'm kind of drawing a brain cramp right now. I'll have to see. Um, I'm also going to uh, put a joist right here. And what I'm going to do is these double joists, I'm going to have them extend to here. I'm going to have them extend to there. And this joist, I'm going to have extend to this joist here. So there's a wall above here. So this will end up being, there's a wall above. So this will end up being a joist here too. I'm going to trim this. So the wall starts right here. And I'm going to offset it two and a half. So there will be a joist right in that spot there too. I'm going to make these cyan. having a brain cramp here. I'll have to kind of figure something out. So I did a little bit of homework and um, 
the top of this, I'm quite comfortable with the top of this area here, but um, I didn't really know how the joist would sit because there's a beam here. I'm like, well, do we have to put double joist above a beam? That would kind of be redundant. So I kind of looked at a, a joist plan that I had. I showed my students in class, and this is a kind of a cool little joist plan. It's the exact same scenario that we're, we have right now where the beam runs right beside the stair. What they did is it just looks like they just put a rim board there. So there's this little pink line which just kind of keeps the joist from twisting. So there is a bit of a rim joist along there. And as you see, it's the same rim joist that we have along the whole exterior of this project. So um, what that is, is that's another one and an eight. So I'll just do that. I'll offset 1.125 and I'll offset this beam line and all these joists that are coming in this, this area will just uh, end up bumping into that, um, into this um, rim joist that I just put right here. So I'm going to trim that and erase the rest of it. So it's going to trim right here and then it'll go all the way over to here and I want to end here. So it's going to stop. I think I'm going to have to do a little bit more homework here. I'm going to stop it right here for now. And just erase the rest of that line. So this is my new rim board. There's a rim board here. So all these joists on the inside of this, I don't need anymore. So I'm going to define a cutting edge and cut here. And I'm going to cut here. And all of these will be gone. Oops, can't do that. So all these joists end up being gone. This is another joist. This is the last joist that I made. So I'm going to um, hang that joist like that and then maybe I will extend the rim joist maybe just for fun I'll see if this works I'll extend the rim joist all the way to there something like that I'm going to match that properly actually I'm going to draw another line there from here to here I think this will work we'll see and that, and that's sort of my, how my rim joist is working so you can see these joists here are all coming and sitting on that beam right there and then they're hanging off these are there. They're not even hanging. Actually, they are hanging off that joist there. And then these joists that we had before are now coming, and they're sitting on this. On this, are they're hanging off this joist right here? So what we end up having is uh, I'll put some hangers in here. I just made some hangers off to the side, and this is just a little something I made so that we can actually see how this all works. That joist there didn't go in the right spot. That hanger didn't go in the right spot. So this hanger is going to move down here. Kind of like that, and then I'll mirror this hanger. So there'll be another hanger right there. So if this these joists are hanging off those ones, I've also created a double hanger. It's going to rotate it. And move it in place. It's going to be slightly off. That's OK. I just want to kind of show you where they're sitting. And then I'll mirror this one as well. This hanger will be sitting like this. And so you can see how these are hanging. Well, since this thing here is now low bearing, I'll need to double this. So just offset that 2.5. It only needs to go the double portion. It only needs to go to the edge of the beam. So that one can be, this one can't be deleted, of course, because that's the regular one, but the one that's doubled can. And then this one needs to be doubled as well, because it's now load bearing, and that can also be trimmed from there down. After I did a bit more homework, small change here. These, um, this rim joist is just, these, um, what are they called? Oh. I forget these these joists here. They don't need to be doubled in this case. They are in this real case scenario. So they're just going to sit on top of the beam, and then the rim joist is just going to come and bump into the sides of those. So I'm just going to make a small change there. These joists actually wouldn't hang. This this rim joist would only come to there. So the rim joist comes into the side of this one, and then this one just extends to here. Like that, and as you can see, these 
come and sit on top of that beam right there. And then this rim joist comes and bumps into the side. This one would come and sit on top of that beam. This rim joist would come and sit into the side of it like that. So sometimes it gets a little bit confusing as to what actually happens here. Um, I've never drawn a joist plan before, but you definitely need to know. I have actually. I've drawn a couple, but you definitely need to understand how these things start to work. So there you go. Um, I do need this hanger here, though. This hanger would come over here. And that's looking pretty that's looking pretty good and then i wonder if these would have hangers on them too i think they would uh, they don't they're just they aren't not hanging they're sitting on top of that beam and the purpose of this rim joist is just to keep those joists from twisting just sort of keep them in place you can see all of these would have hangers on them there don't know if i'll go and install all that or do all that work but all of these would have an, end up having hangers on them too and um, you can see how this stuff sort of starts to work might be a couple small errors in there but it sort of gives you the idea of what we're trying to achieve what I also did on this house for my students at SAID is um, I, uh, I drew some cantilevers just so we could see how a cantilever works. And I'm going to put my um, my header on there first, and I'm going to extend these. So if we have a cantilever that's running in the same direction, I'm going to extend them, select boundary edges, select that, hit enter. And then these are all going to extend to that. So that's how a cantilever would work here. Of course, this rim joist here would get trimmed. It would now stop at the edge. And then um, I can uh, put a little rim joist here and a rim joist here. It would essentially be a pony wall. It could be a pony wall. I might end up just going offset 1.125. Again, just put another little rim joist there. And I can do the same thing here. Just something that's structural to keep our lives easier. And then... I'm going to trim this up. I'm going to trim at the cutting edges. I want to actually just, uh, I was going to fill it that, but I won't do that. I'll extend this. This will be fine, and I'll extend this one here. This probably isn't the way it would really be done, but then I can trim this. I'm going to trim at here and at here and get rid of all of this, get rid of that rim joist below for sure. And then this is the foundation wall below, so I won't get rid of all that stuff, but you can see how this thing starts to work. Here's my rim joist wrapping around. And here's my cantilever joist running out past the edge of that foundation. So that should start to work. And then here, a little bit different. All oh, this toilet's going to give me a headache. Um, here, a bit different. I'm going to start my joist right here. Maybe I'll do a rim joist there, offset 1.125. I'll do a rim joist here. Uh, just this this, uh, this rim joist that we talked about. And then I'm going to offset the outside 19.2. I'm going to take this line, offset it, and then I need it to be um, one point. 25 because it's two and a half inches wide so it goes up and comes down this way and that gives me the center of my first choice which is now at 19 2. i'm going to trim it and then uh because it can't deliver two feet yes two feet i need to go in at least four feet so i'm going to offset 48 inches from outside of foundation wall go into here and it gets to there so then i need to go farther than that so i'm going to extend that joist to this boundary edge. I'm going to extend it to here, hit enter, and then I'm going to extend that joist like this. And then I'm going to copy this. Of course, I'm going to copy it at 19.2. Oh, that first rim joist actually kind of won't work. Copy from that point to this point over and over again. Because this rim joist won't really work here because I need to have a joist that goes all the way back there, right? I can't just have this rim joist, otherwise it'll be like a double cantilever. So as I check out my answer key again, or not an answer key, but a real life, I wouldn't actually put a rim joist there. I could just run the joist past here. It ends up being double because it's load bearing, but we can just do something here as well. Probably just end up being a joist. So as I go back to my drawing, I'm going to get rid of this rim joist here. Again, might not be perfectly correct, but we, we're getting, we're understanding how this starts to work. And then I'm just going to offset this uh, 2.5. This will be a joist. Actually, I'm going to erase. I uh, will have to do that. Yeah, I have to extend this. I can't just copy it. It won't work. And I'm going to extend to the boundary edge. I want this line here. Hit enter and then extend both those. That should work. And I'll do the same thing here. I'll offset 2.5, extend to the boundary edge. There we go. 
as you see, I've drawn a couple hangers, installed them there, installed a hanger here. And this is problematic. Actually, it might actually end up working. This is my this is my line for four feet. So I'll erase that and I've come all the way back to here. Because this is now low bearing, I'm gonna I'm gonna either double this joist or make it to an LVL. I'll trim it. Doesn't need to go all the way, just needs to go to there. It's actually cantilever, so that's kind of cool too. Um, I think this toilet flange might actually work. The flange is about right here. So this toilet flange is really, really close to working. So that's kind of neat. I'm also going to do some trimming here. And as you can see, I've, I've trimmed up a bunch of these joists because this joist here is now load bearing. Anytime a joist takes load, we can double it up. As you can see, lots of trimming left to do. I'm going to double up that one because I have some hangers that would actually look like this. I'm not going to put this, well, I guess I will put it in the perfect place. This hanger will be hanging off here. It's kind of going to the joist, that's okay, I'm just not going to fix it. They would hang like that. Those hangers would, of course, be up here as well. These joists here are hanging off this double joist. So yeah, that actually, I think that's looking pretty good. If you want to do it, you know, a really good job, you can just trim all these lines below, right? You actually won't, oops, won't do that. But you can trim some lines below like this. So that's a, that's a lot of trimming. But you actually wouldn't see that foundation and stuff, right? You wouldn't see all that stuff below, just like, just like the way that they've drawn this, all these joists and stuff go over top of the foundation below, so you don't see that. So you don't actually see the foundation. Uh, we would have blocking here. I'd have a block about every eight feet. So block would be here somewhere, and then I'd copy that about every eight feet. And then we can uh, just keep copying those down. And whenever we're running a pony wall or a, a not, not a header joist, we can put blocking about every eight feet. But um, that's kind of how it works. Uh, a little bit messy. Hopefully we kind of get the gist of what we just did today, but and it's not you know, perfect, but I think it'll give you a really good understanding of what we're trying to accomplish with our choice plans. Hopefully that helped.